Well, that wasn't very nice. At least it beeped. All of a sudden it went beep! 33 minutes. I guess that's the limit. So, this fellow, Kelsport Products, sells something called wool wax, which was designed to be competition to fluid film. Comes in a metal pail instead of a plastic pail. It's more or less the same price, $150 shipped, or it's $10 less for a five gallon pail, which is lots of liters. Four, eight, 16 liters approximately. So I was thinking of trying it. It says it's thicker, but you have to heat it up. Now what you do is you put this big ring on, and this big ring has a retaining ridge inside, a retaining receptacle for the snap ring, similar to what GM puts on their steering columns pre-airbag to stop the steering wheel from coming off. Or it holds the horn ring in place. It holds the lock ring, which is on top of the horn ring, and blah, 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 blah. So I'm going to try. This is the easy part, getting it on. The hard part is snapping it inside here. And if you look at the GM manual, it shows you using two pairs of pliers. Then you need to put this in a vise. And you can see my vise. My vise is, I don't know what. So I've got a couple pairs of pliers here. I've had this pair for 30 years. It's a Craftsman made in USA. And I've got a ground in ridge there where I used to attach my jumper clip to test spark plug wires, a grounding spot. This is the hard part, getting this thing to snap in without having it in a vise. And almost in, but almost only counts in horseshoes. Yep, just keeps popping out the other side. Oh, I need a third set of hands. Help! You see down here? Oh, man. Oh, yeah. I'm tilting it one way and it's going the other. Time for the pipe wrench. Oh, buggered it all up. Where are we? Where's my finger? Edge of the fire extinguisher. Like I said, this is tricky. This would be a good time to fast forward. I think I've done it this way sometimes. So close, but it doesn't matter. You got to get it all the way in, otherwise you got nothing. Whoop! Snap! That wasn't too bad. The steering wheel one is hard. I've done it without a steering wheel lock plate depressor. Then you've got another one that protects it. It's somewhere in this mess. I'll never be organized. Get over it, guys. This is just the way I operate. Could be worse. It could be a drunk or something. I had that little piece on the end of the shaft. Oh, here's one right here. See why you gotta have spare parts around? This one just protects that ring from whatever it protects it from. Goes right there. Yep. I know. Well, the fire extinguisher hose is actually holding the, my camera. If I just rotate the hose, what do you got there? Yeah, we'll have to look at the fire extinguisher now. Okay, isn't this fun? That's junk. This one's got all kinds of grease on it. it. Must be the right one. Let's put on a little bit of this dust attractant. And then you move that back to there. And whose videos was I watching? Escort LX. Now that's full of grease, so it's hydraulically pushing it back out so you pound on it a bit. 
and it'll eventually force the grease up. There we go. I was watching Escort LX something or other. There's more to his name, and I can't do a thing on my phone. Once I got the video going, you can't do anything except plug it into the charger and, and pause it. He was, he does repair GM and other, I guess other, dashboard clusters, specifically the 2000 to 2006. They switched the body style in 2007. He does other ones. I saw him do a Buick one, so I watched him. But it's the kind of thing that you can do something else while you're watching him because it's just the camera above his shoulder focused on his workbench while he undoes other people's disasters. You know what I was thinking? I should clean the threads for the solenoid. You don't need to put any on this shift fork. I've never seen it wear there. I don't think it matters. It wears on those buttons, but I don't think anything's going to help that. By the time it wears, it actually doesn't wear. It actually wears on the backwards application. Not when you're, this is when you're cranking. It wears when it's idling, when it slows down, when it pulls it back. So I don't think it's an issue. What I should have done is taken this to the wire brush. I'm going to put this starter together. I'm going to put the field coil on. And I can't make a mistake here because... Where did the field coil go? I think it's still in my workshop. Here's the junk one, the smaller diameter one. Light duty, probably from a V6 4.3 or something to that effect. It's the same nose, so it has to have been a small block Chevy. Uh, I'm going to go get the field coil. Please hold. I'm back. I found that ring thingy. So I'll put it on my parts starter for future use. In case I lose another one, I've got a few spares. So I've got the bolts, I've got the socket, and I've got to put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. These brushes are alright. They show minimal wear. Sometimes the field coil shows, the magnets show some wear where the armature was rubbing, but I've seen starters work just fine, even though they're rubbing. So, next. Next goes Let me drop that. I'm gonna lock this on. Oh I was gonna take a little bit of sandpaper to that. What do you think? Hmm. Give me a sec. Got a Scotch Brite pad or some similar. I'm gonna just polish this up a little bit. I'm not gonna go crazy with sandpaper, it's not necessary. It's gonna polish up really well, unlike my alternator slip rings that were junk. Oh, staple just attached itself. Go away. There. That looks a little better. Now I can put on the field coil. Don't smash it on because you've got the brushes in their little fragile plastic holders. The positive ones have plastic holders. You able to see up there? Let me see if I can raise this a little bit without making it go crazy. That's my knee. We are too high. Pull back the brushes one at a time and whoop! There it goes. Line it up. And the locating pin is right there. There's a little dowel pin that. And then you put on the bushing that I think I left on the floor. Oh, here's one here. I don't know if there's a specification for it, but there's always a bushing. I'm going to put put a grease on the back. I'm going to put on the little fiber bushing or anti-contact friction, anti that. And here is my end cover. I'm going to pack it full of grease. 
I'm just going to put a little bit in and wipe a little bit of grease in there. It'd be nice if there was a grease fitting on this. Mercedes used to have grease fittings on their door hinges. Some vehicles have a tendency to wear door hinges. Can you say General Motors? GM used to have great door hinges in the mid 60s, early 60s. My Corvair's got pretty worn door hinges considering how long they're supposed to last. But in the late 60s, GM went crazy with their crappy hinges. The doors got longer and longer, and the hinges got flimsier and flimsier. Okay. I think the bolts are, I forget where the bolts are, the bolt receptacles. Oh yeah, one's almost at the bottom. Almost exactly, it's at 6.30. Oh, I didn't put any grease in there. Shame, shame, shame. Shame, 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 shame on you. If you can't dance too. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease in there. Mmm, yummy. A little bit in that one. I'm gonna put some on the bolt itself. Mmm. And then I'm gonna call Good Tin Body Billy because I got a friend of mine, sharpshooter, in Boston that wants to go get my Tornado at Billy's so I can store it here instead of under a tarp at his house. He wants to come and visit me and convince me I should be driving a 7.3. I said, I bought a Duramax! <laughs> I was looking at a tool set at the crappy tool store and it said Duramax Tools. I got a Duramax. I think that's there's one in my future. Now, I got a little bushing in place there. I'll put a bit of grease on the other side of that fiber bushing or friction dissipator or whatever you call it. A little bit of grease on the copper. No. A little bit of grease on the end. And with the end cap on. Everything kosher here? Yep. Everything look kosher to you? And it won't go on because it's hydraulically locked. See the little pinhole here. Got the grease pressure out. How do you like that? Is that tight or what? I guess you just rotate it and the grease will eventually work its way out of the cap. See? There we go. And that goes right there, almost directly in line. Oh, it does, but the seam where the case halves are attached together when this was manufactured in some factory in, long, in a long forgotten town in the U.S. of A. I'm going to put a bit of grease on those threads. Never have too much grease. Nothing instructional here, just pure entertainment. I read some of the disclaimers on some of these guys' websites. Way too complicated. I ordered some right stuff caulking on Amazon for the transfer case that I hope to rebuild in a couple of weeks. And where did my other bolt go? What came in the mail? But a caulking gun for ten dollars. A dollar store caulking gun, ten bucks. That was a PO. I read the comments. It says this is only for the caulking gun. Does not include the caulking. Yeah, dollar caulking gun for ten bucks with no caulking. Uh, where is the other bolt? Here's the corroded one. I thought I brought both of the bolts. I could put the old bolt in from the other starter. Huh, too short. How do you like them apples? Look at that. Where did their bolt go? 
There's a hinge pin for the door behind me. All right, give me a sec. What are we at here? 15 minutes exactly. Almost forgot about you. So I just cleaned off the bolts for the other starter, the junk starter, with parts flying out of it galore. And I'm going to loosely reassemble it. So when the time comes to scavenge some more parts, I'll say, yeah, that starter should be complete, more or less. put the bushing on, but I'm going to throw the bolts in. Anyways. Just loosely assemble it. solenoid bolts in with the solenoid that's right here. No, this isn't the right one. The solenoid to this starter is right here. I don't know why they shortened it. I wonder what the difference is. See that? Got a shorter cap. Guess I'll look inside the other one and see. Spring. This isn't even the right solenoid. Look at that. Too long. It's made for a heavy duty starter with a longer armature. But in any case, it's just parts. Part starter. Good for parts. Okay. Move that to the side and back to this one. So I've got to go service the solenoid. Well, that's a good grease. You can actually feel the grease catching, sucking. I've got to crimp this screw replacement here, this rebuilder's part. Just give it a crimp. I guess it gets you get a couple of uses out of it. As long as it doesn't fall out of the hole. There. Squoosh. Boy, that's really close. I'm gonna squoosh it some more. Squoosh it and chooch it! waiting for the body shop to call me so I can bring in my 84 Suburban. He said, maybe today. Well, today's over. It's 8.20 on Monday. So I've got the other bolt here. I'm going to dip it in the grease. Think that's enough grease? Nope. I'm going to fluid film this truck. I was watching some video and some guy was trolling and bashing a guy. Oh, I know what it was. The guy was discussing. It was a Canadian guy, probably in Tirana. It was a video from 2010. Eight years ago. It was regard. Oh, I know what it was about. No, it all comes back. He was discussing the exhaust manifold bolt breakage issue on the GM 4.8, 5.3, 6 liter, and 6.2. 
and he was saying that vehicles fail their emissions test because the bolts break and they suck in air and it screws up the exhaust mixture and sends a computer code light and you can't pass your clean air, your drive clean, your emissions test, if it's applicable in your state or province or county or area of the county. And he said GM needs to come to bat, man up, and do a recall on those exhaust manifold bolts. And that was in 2010 that he made that video, eight years ago. And, well, what I was discussing was the guy bashing him. It's not a truck. Oh, it's not a... He said, oh, you have to have your car. GM should come to bat and fix these cars. He was just using it in the, in the very open, generic term of, oh, my car won't start, when actually he was referring to a truck. And this guy was carrying on. So anyways, the guy that was making the video got all bent out of shape, and he responded, what are you, an F in this? Blah, 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 blah. Go on. I said, just go back and troll some other kitty videos. And That wasn't nice. The guy just says car because it rolls off the tongue. It's a one-syllable word, whereas T-Ruck or truck is two syllables. It has a hard ending. So it's easier to say my car won't start when you're referring to your truck. And these are light trucks anyways. They're not really trucks. They're light trucks. They're trucks, but they're light trucks. A truck is something that weighs 10,000 or so pounds and up, I would think. And I don't think any Suburban weighs more than maybe six or 6,500 pounds. I weighed my white one when I was coming back from Phoenix on the way to Florida on I-10, but that thing's just sitting in the shop now in a million pieces. Anyways, this guy was bashing him for calling a truck a car, a light truck a car, and that's just not fair, but changing the subject. What we got here for minutes? 21 minutes. There's this company called Kral, K-R-A-L, Kral, or Kral Automotive Products, K-A-P, CAP, and they sell a bracket Here's your GM exhaust manifold, bolts into the cylinder head there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight bolts for four cylinders on each side. And the front one busts its head off, usually flush with the block. Same with the back one. And you get exhaust leaks. They go and when the engine warms up, things expand, the leak goes away. But it sounds nasty. It could bring a tiny amount of fumes to the interior, but mostly you fail your emissions tests. So this company makes a bracket that costs... $30, $40, and it's a big, thick quarter inch or 5 sixteenths plate of steel. And it bolts around the manifold here, and then it bolts the two existing bosses in the front of the motor, maybe for an air conditioning compressor or whatever it was supposed to bolt in the front. The holes are drilled and tapped. They may be full of corrosion or dirt or mud, depending how many miles a vehicle has, probably over 100,000 or 160,000 kilometers. So this bracket bolts around like that. It's the size of your hand, and then you attach it here with two big bolts, whatever size they are. They're pretty big. They're bigger than the exhaust manifold bolts. Then you tighten a screw on the back that pushes the manifold against the cylinder head because you've bolted it here, and at 90 degrees, you're pushing the manifold against the head, and the front ones are easy to install, especially the, um, I think the driver's side is the problem, which I have that on my 6-liter van, and the back one's a lot more complicated to get into. You've got to deal with it, and they tell you you can put a air ratchet, whatever they do. Anyways, you can watch up some videos on it. They've had this product for probably 10 years. Kral, K-R-A-L, sold by K-A-P. And two, uh, the guy sent me the video, and I watched the video of the guy ranting about the GM should come to town or come to task. <laughs> They're leaving town, going to Mexico. They should come, come to bat and pay for these endless exhaust manifold bolt breakages. Look at that, I've got two ratchets here. Made in USA, Craftsman. I buy them on eBay. Yeah, actually look at that. They're quite different considering they're identical. This one is stamped or cast much deeper than this one. Much deeper. And the back is completely different. Forged in USA, 346 Ah, look at that. Yeah, I would have sworn they're identical, but they're actually ever so slightly different. Is that going to focus? I got lots of them. I buy them on eBay, 20, 25 bucks each. Sometimes you buy a whole set, three of them. The three eighths, the quarter inch, three eighths, and half inch, you can buy them for 50, 60 bucks. There's also the flexible head, the three eighths. I have one flexible half inch, but it's a, a coarse tooth. Look at the play there. What's this one like? Same shit. Maybe not quite as bad. I bought a magnetic base dial indicator to check my clutch 
play when I put my clutch packs together how much clearance I have. I'm going to go rebuild the solenoid. So you hang on as if you have a choice, huh? Another five minutes on the polishing wheel or the buffing wheel or the wire wheel. What I did was I cleaned up the contact area here. It was really badly pitted. And I also polished up the underside of the bolt that sends the power from the battery through the disc as the coil here flies, flings this thing. So I did the bottom here, the ring. We put this back in there, bend that back over there. I cleaned up all the threads, nice and shiny. They were corroded just a little bit. And I also reversed this bolt on the 6.2 diesel solenoids, which I wish I had a genuine one. You can't tell what's genuine. This contact area is probably 50% bigger because that, this disc here, this disc contacts power from the battery and it contacts right there on not a very large area, right there. See where it's worn away here? So I flipped the bolt around, but the diesel has a bigger bolt. I took apart a few solenoids and I found an original. I'm going to go to my buddy who has tons of cores and bins that he says are worthless. He'll never sell another one. Not too many. I'm going to see if he'll sell me all of his cores. I'm going to take them all apart. So I put some anti-seize, some copper anti-seize, on the stud that goes through the solenoid cap. And I'm going to put a nut on here, which I don't have here. Oh man, back into the shop. Uh, and the bolts are also, look, I have bolts from another solenoid right there. So, 5 sixteenths. Yep. I'm going to put a drop of grease on these. Whoop. And sometimes you'll find a little clear nylon washer under these bolts. I haven't seen any in the last few starters that I've dismantled. These thin, very, very thin, clear plastic, nylon, whatever material, Delrin, whatever material they have. Oh, I've got some pump bolts. I've got all kinds of nuts and bolts, except the other one. Like my workshop? It'll never change. Just get used to it. I've just got too much junk, and I don't care if I fling it around, and I can't find it half the time. It's just me. Maybe it's under my heater. Look at that wrench. Found that in an S10 that was a start. Not here. I'll go back in my shop. Luckily I got lots of parts because I lose half the stuff. Where's the pause button? I'm back. I guess I should have brought everything here in the first place. I got my little bolts. With no little nylon washer. Nope. Grease. Uh, oh yeah, it goes over here. Don't need any grease. There wasn't any corrosion on it, but I still put grease on it. Well, it was from California. The grease will all squish out when I tighten it. Squish. I did put grease on that bolt. I forgot. Screw, bolt. When does a screw become a bolt? Fire, fire, fire. Shiny brass nut. Oh, tell me I forgot it. Well, it's good exercise going back and forth. I thought I brought the nut. <coughs> I don't usually like to cough in my productions. I guess I could have paused it. This was the bolt that came out easily. 
just hit my head on the pipe wrench. It's holding the camera in place. Ha oh, ha ha. Yeah, that needs a tap run through there. I'm going to pause you. You don't need to watch this. I got a tap and I clamped it into a vice grip because you can't swing the handle. And you turn it and you go back. So in case any stuff is clogging the little area between the cutters, I spray a little bit of cleaner in here. Just anything. Rinse away the stuff that may get caught in the threads. And it keeps bumping into the field coil connections. So beware. Go really easy on this because it's aluminum and whatever the alloy is that makes up this aluminum. You don't want to mangle it. You got to go really easy. No forcing. Just like a nice woman. Go really easy. She doesn't need to know about your manhood. She needs to see if your fingernails are clean. That's what women care about. I guess I'll stop there, huh? There. Now, take my bolt and run it into the hole. And you can feel all the crud that was in there. Go real easy. So, throw on the spring. Put a bit of grease on this, and then I put it down on the carpet. So, I transferred all the crud on the carpet to the solenoid and all the grease on the solenoid to the carpet. Spring, ding, and put it into the hole, and rotate it, and put some grease on the bolts. Anti-seize or grease, same difference. Don't be shy. bring that nut again. A little bit of grease on the threads. I've got to get the nut for that bottom bolt on the solenoid. And you tighten this up to 150 foot-pounds. Strips real easy. You want it just tight enough so it doesn't fall off. It has no bearing on anything except not falling off. How tight is tight?